experimented with baby. Penis 1.7 inches by 3 inches. Stiff immediately. Throbs in 3.5 minutes. Green's diaries were a highly incriminating record of 20 years of sexual abuse. But Kinsey was tantalized by the prospect of so much unique data. I congratulate you on the research spirit which has led you to collect data over these many years. Everything that you've accumulated must find its way into scientific channels. Kinsey worshipped data. Anyone who could contribute to his aggregate data had a very high place in his, you know, pantheon of, 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 of heroes. And when Kinsey learned about this material, uh, he saw it as a gold mine, as a scientific gold mine uh, that would provide information uh, in an area about which science knew very, very little. Kinsey met Green at a secret location in Arizona. Because of the illegal nature of their contents, Green had buried many of his diaries in the desert. Kinsey persuaded him to retrieve them and pass them on to him. Green had been a predatory child molester for more than 20 years. So why did Kinsey agree to work with him? Clarence Tripp was one of Kinsey's closest associates. Even today, he defends Kinsey's involvement with the pedophile. Green was actually extremely conservative in all kinds of ways, and we know that for sure, because he had, um, you know, you can get into trouble in a flash if you have any kind of, uh, uh, even uh, tickling, any kind of sexual contact whatsoever. Um, with the child, because all you need is one whimper out of the child. You don't even need a formal charge to put you in the jailhouse. Well, here's this man with hundreds of contacts. There was never a charge against him. He was never arrested for anything. All the children thought he was wonderful. Uh, all the mothers thought he was wonderful. Uh, there are two, I suppose, lest uh, you get contradicted, there are two instances in which a young boy or girl, a girl, I guess it was, I don't remember, um, didn't complain. They agreed to the sexual contact, but then they found it very painful and yelled out when it actually took place. This was because they were very young and had small genitalia, and Green was a grown man with enormous genitalia, and there was a fit problem. For the next three years, Kinsey corresponded regularly with Green. In 1948, he would publish large sections of Green's diaries in his first revolutionary book on human sexuality. But rather than presenting them as the claims of a self-confessed child abuser, Kinsey put them forward as the first ever scientific proof that children were sexual beings from birth. When, in 1948, Alfred Kinsey's sexual behavior in the human male became an instant bestseller, no one seemed to notice the contents of Chapter 5. In it, Kinsey reproduced sections of the pedophile diaries he had received from Mr. Green. First, and with no independent corroboration, he published verbatim Green's detailed descriptions of what the pedophile claimed were orgasms experienced by the hundreds of children he had abused. Extreme tension with violent convulsion, often involving the sudden heaving and jerking of the whole body, groaning, sobbing, or more violent cries, sometimes with an abundance of tears, especially among younger children. If you read those words, 
What he's talking about is kids who are screaming, kids who are protesting in every way they can the fact that their bodies, that their persons are being violated. Uh, the individual in question, uh, I think, uh, harmed uh, in serious ways uh, a large number of young people. Green had also carried out what he claimed were scientific experiments to determine the age at which boys were first capable of orgasms. For the experiment, he masturbated 317 infants and children from two months to 15 years old, recording which ones achieved what he interpreted as orgasms. Kinsey reproduced this as Table 31. In table 32, he laid out the time it had taken Green to bring each of these children to these so-called orgasms. Green also claimed that his experiments proved that, given sufficient adult stimulation, some of the boys were capable of multiple orgasms. Again, with no way of checking the claims, Kinsey simply reproduced them as scientific fact. Finally, in table 34, Kinsey set out Green's notes on the time it had taken him to masturbate the children to multiple orgasms. The average interval between the first and second climaxes ranged from less than 10 seconds to 30 minutes or more. Even the youngest males, as young as five months in age, are capable of such repeated reactions. The table suggested that some children including a four-year-old boy, had been masturbated over a 24-hour period. In his book, and based primarily on Green's information, Kinsey claimed that children could, with the assistance of an experienced adult, enjoy sexual activity from the moment they were born. It was a revolutionary claim that overturned all previous scientific knowledge about the development of child sexuality. But the claim and the experiments that lay behind it have alarmed Kinsey's critics, particularly those who campaign for a return to traditional values. We have a whole chapter here in which children have been tortured for this so-called scientific data. And this is the calculations of those abuse data into tables to promote this as scientific to the world. An assessment of these data suggests that at minimum 317, at maximum 1,200 and some boys were being sexually raped around the clock using stopwatches. Because of its illegal origins, Green's material was a closely guarded secret. Only a trusted inner circle knew of its existence. It was illegal, and we knew it was illegal, but uh, it's very important for people to study childhood sexuality. In other cultures, anthropologists can sometimes do this, but in our culture, it is uh, because of our insistence that children are non-sexual, uh, studying childhood sexuality was essentially impossible, except, you know, for this case like Green. And uh, so, he, he, had a, he contributed a fair amount to our knowledge of, and when I say our knowledge, I mean all medi medicine's knowledge of sexuality in children. But some of Kinsey's team questioned both the morality and the scientific validity of using the material. Well, when I saw the table on, on uh, time to orgasm, for, uh, when infants are, are stimulated, uh, carried out to the a fraction uh, of a second, I, I thought it, it was an absurd page in science. But to actually stand there with a stopwatch and have somebody or oneself stimulate uh, the infant and time it to the split second was simply uh, so gross that I didn't, uh, I didn't feel it, it, it had a place in, in, in a scientific book.